Good morning. Today's topic is on survey. Learning outcomes. Explain the different types and uses of survey. Describe the various methods of data collection. List the steps in conducting a survey. Summarize the various conclusion of National Oral Health Survey conducted in Malaysia. What is meant by survey? Survey is nothing but systematic method of collecting the information from a sample of the population of interest such that the results are representative of the population. I hope you understand what, what the definition is speaking about. If you want, I can give you the example. Survey is nothing but the method of collecting the information from a sample because whatever the research you do it's only on the samples you are selected you are not going to do all on the whole population for example the malaysian population is 30 million but your sample will be somewhere 300 600 something like that so your aim is to generalize the results of your sample that is 300 to 30 million so the survey is systematic method of collecting the information from a sample of population of your interest such that results are representative of the population i hope you can understand what i'm speaking so these are the types of the surveys like descriptive and analytical descriptive under descriptive there are two types cross-sectional longitudinal under analytical cross-sectional and longitudinal so there is no difference between these two yes there is there is a difference Descri descriptive will give only like description age gender location time place but analytics will give because in analytics we'll have some hypothesis we have to prove or accept like accepting or rejecting that hypothesis will be there uses of survey the first use is monitoring the trends of oral health disease then for the policy development then for program evaluation then for the assessment of needs then providing visibility to dental issues coming to method of data collections the first is health interviewer survey second is health examination survey third is health record survey the fourth is questionnaire survey come to health interviewer survey it is a method of measuring subjective phenomena such as pursuit morbidity disability and impairment opinions beliefs and attitudes the data obtained may not be reliable because of the limitation of the interviewer method so it can be combined with health examination come to health examination survey the information is more valid because it is carried out by a team of doctors and auxiliaries but the disadvantage is it is expensive and cannot be carried out on extensive scale the method also requires consideration of treatment provision to ailing patients health record survey collection of data from health service records most economical method the main disadvantage is the data is not population based reliability is questionable lack of uniform procedures and standardization in the recording of data coming to questionnaire survey the use of questionnaire and interviews is standard method of data collection in clinical epidemiological psychosocial and demographic research 
it is used to measure subjective phenomena taking medical history is a form of questionnaire interview and is recorded either in a fixed protocol or taken as an open ended interview types of questionnaire survey like mailed survey telephonic interview survey then face to face interview survey if i ask question like among these three the mail telephone and face to face which one do you feel is a good method of surveying a people you have to answer coming to the advantages it's like simple economical standardization written instruction reduce biases from difference in administration anonymity like privacy encourages candid uh, candid and the honest responses to sensitive questions disadvantage is certain level of education and skill is expected from the respondent there is usually high rate of non response for example if you send the mail uh, for 100 people you will never, like uh, i don't think all the 100 people will uh, respond to your mail so online things you can't expect 100% response we, we are seeing like our videos we are putting in the e portal and we can see like out of 20 people only 5 will be viewed so other 15 they will take their own time to view types of questionnaires there are two types of questionnaire open ended question and closed ended questions in the open ended it's free response in the fixed is alternative response that means for example in the open ended it's like open question uh, if in the survey of uh, oral cancer if you are asking how many cigarettes do you smoke some may answer 5 some may answer 10 some may answer 20 but in closed ended it's not like that you are giving them options like first option is 5 second option is 10 third option is 10 to 15 something like that it's a closed ended in open ended the subject answer in his own words but in closed ended answering is done by choosing from number of fixed alternative responses in the open ended useful for anthropological and social enquiries like anthropology means study of characteristics of a human beings so that kind of study needs open ended question because you have to extract all the data sometime irrelevant data also you have to extract in anthropological studies then closed ended is not with like greater uniformity and simplicity will be there in the open ended in medical surveys fewer the better in the closed ended limits the variety and detail of the responses open ended question deviation from the subject in questions but in closed ended it's it is not deviated it will stick to its objectives in open ended the process is lengthy and time consuming but in the closed ended it's short and it's collecting the data required for or to meet its objectives so this is an example advantages of closed questionnaire is focused and pertinent to the study subjects easy to administer uniform and simple pre coded analyzed in short form types of scales there are two types likert scale and gutman scale the likert scale here you can see strongly agrees one disagree sorry strongly disagrees one disagrees two strongly disagrees three slightly agree agrees five strongly agrees six like that either increasing or decreasing ranking will be given so this is nothing but likert scale but in the gutman scale you can see here please share answer yes or no to the following questions the first question is i like playing video games yes or no second is i like pizza yes or no 
I spend a lot of time in gaming. Yes or no? I eat out frequently. Yes or no? I sometimes go without eating or sleep so I can finish video game. Yes sir. Here in this we will count how many yes. For example, I will give one mark for yes and zero for no. So I will count how many ones. So at the end I can tell like uh, hundred people out of hundred people this many like playing video games are the average. So like that we are going to calculate. In Likert scale we are going to find out the median. So in some 4.5 percent people were agreeing like that we can tell. So for time being you just remember there are two scales Likert scale and Gutman scale. So this is the description of the Likert scale. It's summative used to quantify attitude and behavior. Respondents are asked to select a responses that best represent the rank of rank or degrees of answer. The respondent may be asked to indicate whether he strongly agrees, agrees, neither disagrees or strongly disagrees. Each responses is assigned a number and points of each is added. Coming to Gutman scale, this contains a series of statements that expresses increasing intensity of characteristic. The respondent is asked to agree or disagree with each statement or yes or no. The respondent score is the total number of items with which he agrees or disagrees. Language and word wording style. In the, any questionnaire study, the pitch to the level of the respondents. You can't use uh, the sentences like vocabulary, which is very high, which is unable, like which is not able to understand by the normal person. So you have to use the language such that the normal, a common man can understand. A common vernacular conversation style should be used. Avoid leading questions. Avoid professional jargon and abbreviations. Sequencing of questions. The first should be introduction and introduction should be clear, concise, but relevant introduction to the questionnaire is helpful with the proper purpose. Cover sheet. The name of the survey and responsible organization code for the respondent, name of the interviewer with date. Sequencing of questions. Warm up questions or statements should start the questionnaire. Do not start with threatening questions about the sensitive issues like income. Transition from one section to other should be smooth. For example, if you are collecting data of knowledge, your study also wants the attitude of the patient. Then when you are trans when you are questions is transiting from knowledge to attitude, it should be smooth. In the body of the questionnaire, appropriate use should be made of standard formats for instruction, like boxes for instruction, instruction to skip some questions that should bypass for particular respondent. Sequencing of questions. Requirements of questions. Respondents can be expected to know the answer. Must be clear and unambiguous. Must not be offensive. Must be fair. Instructions. Separate instruction manual may be used. Instruction may be included in the questionnaire. Reliability of the questionnaire. Inbuilt reliability, which is achieved by repeating certain questions, rephrasing the second inquiry while maintaining the same, are comparable response codes. Repeat reliability, the degree to which the results of measurement, calculation, or specification can be depended on to be accurate. Usually, 
factual question gives reliability opinion questions are less reliable the degree to which a research instrument produces consistent results measured by test and retest parallel farms then internal consistency reliability these are some of the statistical test we have to use to check the repeat reliability come to validity of the questionnaire truth and accurate representative of representation of information it is an estimation of how accurate an instrument is at measuring what it is trying to measure there are two types of internal uh, like validity first is internal validity and the second is external validity see in this picture we can see how reliability and validity varies when there is a good reliability but no validity somewhere if this is the target you are achieving your target here this is like reliable your questionnaire is reliable but not valid here in the second picture you can see low validity and low reliability because here it's not on the particular target also here at least it's on the particular target here there is no particular target and it's not reliable also this you can appreciate this is the picture of not reliable and not valid then what is the difference between this and this and this and this just see the picture and observe you can make the difference this is the one which is having both reliable and valid these two you can relate first and last then these two you can relate ancillary activities retesting the questionnaire training of interviewers callbacks editing and coding coming to the pretesting the questionnaire is the like try out the questionnaire pretesting is carried out on small number of respondents who are comparable with the sample of correspondents but are not part of it the results of the pretesting are incorporated into rewriting of the questionnaires training of interviewers interviewers must be carefully selected and properly trained they are the backbone of the data collection in survey instruction should be given about confidentiality of information patient and perseverance being pleasant with positive attitude following the instructions objective of the training and calibration to ensure uniform interpretation understanding and application by all examiners of the codes and criteria for the various disease and condition to be observed to ensure that each examiner can examine consistently in order to measure intra examiner variability an examiner reproducibility test should be done that is kappa statistics and the values are ranging here precautions during training and calibration keep the number of examiners to minimum yes always you have to keep the number of examiners to minimum discuss interpretation of borderline problems use only one make design explorer i'm giving just an example of explorer in common use one like for example one manufacturer the like, uh, one manufactured instruments whether it's explorer whether or the scale anything but the manufacturer should be the same why means because if you are taking different instrument from the different manufacturer then the accuracy won't be there there will be bias in the measurement of that have all members of team examine few cases in sequence and then exchange cases until each examiner has examined each patient 
type and circulate among the examiners any rules or system which may seem pertinent. The supervisor should recheck an occasional case throughout the entire survey. Callbacks. Callbacks are repeat visits to non-respondents and are most helpful in minimizing the non-response rate. Yeah, I am seeing uh, whenever I post any questions in the e-portal, uh, out of uh, 28 people of batch 22, there are only 15 were responding to my uh, uh, questions. So other 15 were not responding. Again, I have to message them individually for the response like that callbacks we have to do the time of the callback should be convenient and suitable to the respondent don't expect this from us there has to be limit on the number like callbacks minimum two to three editing and coding questionnaire should be checked by supervisor at the end of the each day if there is incomplete answer or unclear statement, missing information, responses are then carefully coded with verification. Coming to steps in surveying, the first and foremost thing is establishing the objectives. Then the second is designing the investigation. Third is selecting the sample. Fourth is conducting the examination. Fifth is analyzing the data. Sixth is drawing the conclusion. Seventh is publishing the results. First, establishing the objectives. The objective must be absolutely clear before considering the design. The objectives can either be stated in the form of hypothesis or may be stated by describing what it is to be measured. This is an example. There is no difference in the periodontal status of males and females aged 35 to 44 years in Butterworth. This is your objective. That means there is no difference in the periodontal status of males and females. After your study, you found out there is a difference rejecting this and accepting your alternative one. That's what Dr. Sheila has taught you. There are two types of hypotheses null hypothesis and alternate hypothesis always you have to start with the null hypothesis this is null hypothesis statement that is no difference if you get any difference after research then you are rejecting this and accepting that designing the investigation prepare a written protocol which contains objective a description of type of information to be collected and the method to be used, a description of sampling method, personal and physical arrangements, statistical method to be used in analyzing the data, provisional budget, provisional timetable of main activities and responsible staff, obtaining approval from the authorities and emergency care and referrals. Selecting the sample. Actually, this procedure is very important, but some of the researchers won't follow this procedure in correct way. While designing a study, it is impossible to examine every individual in the population under investigation. Resources in terms of time, manpower and money may not be available for collection and analysis of vast amounts of data. For this reason, a sample must be chosen from the population. These are some of the sampling techniques. First is probability sampling. Second is non-probability sampling. Under probability, there are simple, systematic, stratified, multi-stage, multi-phase, cluster. In non-probability, purpose you, convenience, quota, snowball. This I think in research methodology that Sheila has taught you. Coming to errors. 
there are many types of errors but here i am going to discuss very few in that the first one is observer error it is subjective and objective subjective means sometimes this is like human bias sometimes we ourselves assume that student is good or that student is bad that is error that is subject to error objective means but sometimes for example if i want to calculate the periodontal pocket depth i will use one probe and i will calculate oh, i was getting some 3.5 if i give it to you and if you measure you will get 4 so which is like if i measure sometime like application of pressure on the pocket or within the pocket is difference among ourselves so that time there will be an bias or it's an error so there is an example for instrumental error and sampling error also in the beginning we will think we will do random sampling later we will do convenient sampling that is the biggest bias in any study conducting the examination scheduling an orderly schedule should be prepared for data collection for example if you have decided what are worth i have to collect the data from 9 to 10 that you have to tell in your protocol preparation only during that time only you have to tell and you have to follow the same timeline why means to prevent the waste of time and resources and to perform quickly and more the time spent on each individual necessitates reduction in the number of individual exam personal and organization skill we need recording clerk organizing clerk and daily review of assessment forms and these are some of the roles of organizing uh, clerk like maintain constant flow of subjects check the finished records for accuracy and completeness ensure adequate supply of sterile instruments the instrument supplies for each examiner there should be plain mouth mirror periodontal probes several pairs of tweezer containers and concentrated sterilizing solution wash basin cloth bowls my question is in your protocol most of you are doing survey like in your research protocol most of you are doing survey have you put this instrument list in your research protocol i don't know please check in your research protocol whether you have put or not if you have not put then you have to put infection control and disposable in the examination area should be planned for maximum efficiency and ease of operation proper sitting of examiners and subjects adequate source of light and avoidance of crowding and noise this is most important in any survey you have to keep the area clean you know i think in the present uh, scenario the covid 19 if you are not controlling or if you are not maintaining infection control appropriately then you are spreading the disease coming to the classification of examination the first one is type 1 the type 1 is complete examination how you can do complete examination means you will be having mouth mirror explorer good illumination full mouth radiographs additional diagnostic method study models pulp testing trans illumination and laboratory investigation so you have not left anything all the things like all the examination you are carrying out that is type 1 type 2 is limited examination you are using only mouth mirror explorer adequate illumination posterior bite wing radiograph and periapical radiograph type 
is just an inspection. You are having only a mouth mirror, explorer, and illumination, most commonly used in public health surveying. That's what we are doing. This is in general public camps. This is in pedo patients are school, small like tadikas screening. You will use only tongue depressor and available illumination. Here for the publics, you will use mouth mirror and probe. Here you use only tongue depressor. So this is like if you want to remember, you can remember this is tadika, this is school. Type 2 is dental clinic, type 1 is a so dental college. We have OPG, everything. Coming to analyzing the data, once the examination is complete, assembling the data gathered and interpretation starts like analysis, data processing, and interpretation of results. If your protocol is correct, you just follow whatever you have written in the protocol. Then the conclusion. The conclusion are specifically related to the investigation that has been carried out and no extrapolation is made to the population as a whole. Final step is the construction of the report with or without a set of recommendations. Publishing the report, statement of the purpose of the survey, materials and methods like area and population, types of information collected, method of collecting the data, sampling method, then results, discussion and conclusion, then the summary. So your report should contain all these things. Then WHO format for reporting survey. The same thing as we discussed in the previous slide. Uh, statement of the purpose of the survey, material method, description, type of data collected, sampling method, examiner personal and equipment, statistical analysis, cost analysis. This is one which is added in WHO format. Then reliability and reproducibility of the results. So this is the most common type of survey we are doing pathfinder survey that means you are finding some path okay for example if you are finding something like in age group of five years you are measuring the oral health status again in the age group of 12 you are measuring the oral health status again between the age group of 15 you are measuring that means you are measuring from in the five year age group 12 year age group and 15 year so some path is there from 5, 12, 15. So 5 I can tell a school going children. 12 and the 15. In the 12 you can see mixed dentition. In the 15 you can see almost the permanent dentition. So like that you are finding some path. So that is nothing but pathfinder survey. So in the pathfinder survey you have to tell about the method and the sampling technique and which are the population and their subgroups and appropriate number of subject specific index age groups in one location in this way reliable and clinical relevant information for planning is obtained at minimum expenses the method is suitable for obtaining the following information like prevalence of the most common diseases, age profile of oral diseases in the population to enable care needs for different age groups, then variation in the disease level, severity and need for treatment. Coming to Pathfinder survey, it also contains pilot survey for minimum sample to check whether whatever preparation you have made it's working properly or it will work properly to check that you are going to do pilot survey once you are whatever protocol you have written it's correct then you have to go for national health survey or national pathfinder survey in the pilot survey most important subgroups you have to select two index age groups you have to select usually 12 years you will select 
minimum amount of data then additional data implementation and monitoring of the service before doing the main study or a main survey you are going to do the pilot survey so once you confirm everything is working according to your plan then you have to go for the national pathfinder survey that is all important subgroups you have to check at least three of the age groups like index age 5 12 15 then 35 to 44 65 to 74 then collection of data planning and monitoring of the services So I already explained what is pilot survey. It's just the beginning of any survey. You have to check whether your protocol is working properly or you have to do any modification. So if you do the pilot survey, you will come to know whether you have to do any modification in the previously planned survey. National Oral Survey of Adults, Oral Health Division, like periodontal status in 1990. Uh, in 2000 and 2010 periodontal disease at all level of severity is 92.8 percent in 1990 90.2 in 2000 and to, in 2010 it was 94 so if you check the trends that is the use of our survey uh, in the 92.8 in the 90s and 90.2 in 2000 that means it is reduced in 2000 but again in 2010 it's increased like this we can plot a trend if you plot a trend you can check for like why that fluctuation what might be the cause for that fluctuation that also you have to check so some of the national level surveys uh, which are uh, which already Malaysian government has conducted uh, that are like national health and morbidity survey national health and morbidity survey 2012 so to in 2011 and 2012 the two surveys are there then national health morbidity survey 2014 national morbidity survey 2011 to 14 conclusion surveys are the backbones for planning and evaluation these two things you have to remember surveys are the backbones for planning and evaluating oral health program properly carried out surveys are economically economically and efficient to gathering data meaningful analysis for example whatever survey you are doing don't think that uh, to fulfill your uh, uh, quota you are doing so it's not like that if you find whatever research you are doing is good and it will helpful for the government just give the report to the government because government don't have funds to carry out all the surveys for like whenever it is needed for them so if you provide some data to them they will happily take your data and they will plan something for the population so don't uh, don't neglect the things take it seriously do according to the plan or in a systematic way so thank you if you have any doubts you can please ask me you can come and ask me or you can mail your doubts i will answer for all the mails